In this video, I want to talk about the different forms of precipitation and actually how they become different forms of precipitation. So we all know rain and snow, but some people may not be that familiar between the differences between sleet, glaze, which is also known as freezing rain, and hail. Well, hail is a little bit more common, um, but how hail forms uh, might seem a little bit foreign to you. So we all know what rain is, liquid water that falls from the sky, and we also know what snow is, which is the same thing as rain, it just falls as ice crystals or frozen water. But what would be the real difference between sleet, hail, and what is known as glaze, uh, which is really just freezing rain here. So kind of just starting with sleet, sleet is half rain, half snow. You can kind of think of it that way. It's the same thing with freezing rain. Um, but basically how sleet forms is that in the upper parts of the atmosphere, we have uh, precipitation that is falling as snow. And then it gets to a warmer part in the atmosphere and those snowflakes actually end up melting. And then as they continue to fall closer to the surface, it re-encompasses some colder air that is left at the surface and then tries to refreeze back into snow but actually doesn't necessarily quite make it there and basically falls to the surface and is observed as almost like a half snowflake, half raindrop. So it's really just a hybrid between the two. So that's what sleet is. So when we look at this diagram here, sleet down here in part C, you can see how this cloud is producing snow in the upper parts of the atmosphere where it is below freezing or cold enough to produce actual snowflakes. But then here you see this warm layer, this mid-level warm layer. And what do we notice here about the temperature profile? We know that the temperature profile should decrease as we increase in altitude. But here, this is an inversion. You see how temperature actually warms as we go higher up in the troposphere. And then at a certain level, it therefore cools again. So this is how atmospheric soundings on skew T plots can be very, very useful. And actually, pivotal weather shows this error, has this feature, which I'll discuss in another video. But here, when we talk about sleet, here, snow starts in the upper parts of the atmosphere, comes down into a warm layer, it melts partial snowflakes, and then as it gets closer towards the surface, we see here that any precipitation that is falling in this layer before it actually gets to the surface falls as a almost like a rain snow mix or what is known as sleet. So that is what sleet is. It's not a raindrop or it's not a snowflake. It's really almost just a, like a frozen, um, almost, you know, like I said, hybrid between rain and snowflake. So that is what sleet is. Um, if we look at rain, rain is pretty straightforward and snow is pretty straightforward. Here you can see how snow falls in the upper parts of the atmosphere, uh, but then as it gets closer to the surface where it is warmer, you see here that all the snow melts and basically just falls to the surface as plain old rain. When it's snow, snow is falling in the upper parts of the atmosphere and the whole entire layer or the whole entire column of air from where the cloud is or where it's snowing all the way down to the surface, it's cold enough throughout that entire layer to fall as snow. You can see the differences between the two atmospheric soundings. Here, this is normal. Temperature decreases with altitude and increases as we get towards the surface. It's the same thing here with snow, except it's just cold throughout the entire layer. Sleet would really just be a hybrid. And Glaze, or also known as freezing rain, is actually just a little bit different. Um, and actually, it's very similar to sleet. So what happens with freezing rain is that you have cold enough air high up in the atmosphere for precipitation to fall out of clouds as snow. And then what happens is that they encompass a thicker warm layer or a larger warm layer where that snow basically melts and then right above the surface, maybe like anywhere between 100 to 1,000 feet, it's actually cold enough for any liquid precipitation that is falling out of the sky to freeze instantly on contact. And that's what 
freezing rain is and that's what glaze is and so it, this is the type of situations that can be very very dangerous because when it's falling it's observed that it's rain but it's actually freezing on contact so the raindrops are actually freezing on contact and so this is what makes things very very slick especially on roadways during wintertime uh, you know freezing rain events so here if we look at the temperature profile we notice that it's very similar to the temperature profile for sleet however this temperature profile here you can see how uh, as it we start getting towards the surface of the earth you can see here that temperature actually warms a little bit and then as we get closer to the surface you can see that temperature decreases just a little bit so here's another inversion and like i said it's very similar to how sleet forms except instead of a smaller warm layer like you have with sleet you actually have a bigger warm layer and then a very tiny cold pocket of air right close towards the surface of the earth so this is the differences between rain snow sleet and freezing rain and that's how they develop so just to so show you some real world examples here's an example of a skew t plot that shows what the atmosphere looks like in a vertical format so when we look at weather models we're very used to looking at um, the entire United States or an entire region as we were if we were observing the earth from space but here this is an atmospheric sounding and this just shows if we were to take the earth and we were to flip it on its side what would the atmosphere look like and so here the red line indicates temperature the blue line indicates dew point and instead of it being in a straightforward xy axis like any kind of normal chart that you might have been used to in the past here on the let's call it the y-axis you have pressure levels but here these are your temperatures so here is the zero degree celsius mark so this would indicate the freezing mark so anything above this so here's minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 minus 40 degrees celsius you can see how temperature gets colder as we go higher up in the atmosphere and temperature is warmer as we get closer towards the surface so this makes sense it's just drawn a little bit funny so here if i were to ask you what does this sounding indicate if it was actually raining what do you think it may or may not be well just looking at this quickly you can see how here where is the freezing level well the freezing level crosses right at about 600 millibars so here anything that is falling is actually falling into a above freezing layer so if this was producing precipitation you would have melting occurring at 600 millibars all the way down to the surface so there's no refreezing concerns here so this would indicate just plain old rain now let's take it up a notch so here we have this sounding here is the zero degree temperature profile and what do you see what kind of precip do you think would be falling here either rain snow sleet or freezing rain what kind of precipitation do you think would happen well if we look at this sounding here everything is below freezing from about 700 millibars all the way up to the upper parts of the atmosphere and you can see how there is a cold layer between the surface and about 900 millibars so between 900 millibars all the way down to the surface which would be a thousand millibars it's below freezing but from 900 millibars all the way up to about 700 millibars it's above freezing and then from 700 millibars all the way up to the upper parts of the atmosphere it is actually below freezing so this typically should just decrease as we go higher up in altitude but as you can see it's not so here what do we have we have areas that are below freezing towards the surface we have a warm mid layer and we have below freezing temperatures aloft so if this was producing precipitation the precipitation would start off as snow it would get mixed into this warm layer it would partially melt and then instantly freeze as we get closer towards the surface so this is what an actual sounding would look like if we were to discuss freezing rain just because the 
warm layer is much thicker and the cold layer is very, very shallow. So this would indicate freezing rain. Now, this sounding looks similar to this sounding. However, this sounding, you may or may not have guessed already, that this would indicate sleet. And so here you have a sandwich between a cold layer aloft, a cold layer at the surface, but you have a little bit of a mid-warm layer here. But you can see that the warm layer is much more shallow than the warm layer in the previous slide. So here, this would indicate sleep. So we have precipitation that falls as snow in the upper part of the atmosphere. It encompasses a warm layer from about 700 millibars to about 850 millibars. And then from 850 millibars all the way down to the surface, this would be a cold enough layer to produce snow, but any kind of snow is actually already melting in this mid-warm layer. So here, this would actually be producing sleet. So snow falls, gets into this warm layer, partially melts, and then partially refreezes on its way back down to the surface. So here, you can see a nice little inversion as temperature actually increases with height and then decreases again. So inversions oftentimes look like little check marks, so or a sideways check mark. So if you can see here, here is a check mark, and here is a check mark, there is a check mark, and then it continues to decrease. That's what inversions look like. So that's what different precip types look like on soundings, and you can use this knowledge to your advantage, especially if you're forecasting uh, in colder seasons and you're trying to identify any kind of wintry precipitation.